Today we're going to talk about, uh, what are we talking about? Hebrew and Hotep Hustlers. Hebrew and Hotep Hustlers. That's what we're going to talk about today. There's no such thing in the Bible. Listen to what I'm about to say. There's no such thing in the Bible as a black Hebrew Israelite. They be suckering these women into that stuff too. They be getting y'all. Y'all better get your minds right. I tell you, these Hebrew and Hotep hustlers. I expect the committed community to be exactly as they are today. Unruly, unlawful, hateful. They constantly teach the lie that Moses, watch this what I'm about to say. The, the, the Hotep community constantly teaches the lie that Moses plagiarized the Ten Commandments. We're going, we're going to kill that thought right now. 42 principles of Ma'at. We got to kill this stupidity. This is where they say Moses, they say his Ten Commandments, he copied from the 42 principles of Ma'at. Today we're going to talk about, uh, what are we going to talk about? Hebrew and Hotep Hustlers. Hebrew and Hotep hustlers. That's what we're going to talk about today. So, we're going to move on now. I wanted to open up with that for all the haters and the trolls out there. I want to show y'all now all the similarities between the Israelite community and the Kemetic community. I'm back on that again. Because they're so close, so similar, it'll make your head spin. I ain't doing it out of hatred. I love our people. We do love our people. We did come from the comedic community. We were part of the black power stuff and all that. Whole tap, uh, fist in the air, beads. I don't know. Some of them beads look strange to me, but I ain't going to say what I think they look like. But anyway. <laughs> but so that we can all, the, the, the prayer is that we can all repent. We can all repent and make the necessary tr changes to our lives and our doctrine. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Okay. I'm going to show y'all a video. I'm going to show y'all a video about uh, the Hotep Hustlers. Sorry to bust your bubble, but that's just how things are. <laughs> Wanted to, talk, to start the year off by talking about these Hotep Hustlers. The reason this became a, it has become an issue is because in 2017, we have this entire group, this entire movement of quote-unquote pan africanist We have this entire movement of people who work on this agenda of more African than thou, who are quick to call anybody from Serena Williams to Jim Brown an Uncle Tom or Coon or Jigaboo or anything else under the sun because they hold a different political, social, economic, any other belief than them. These individuals do not have their own agenda. These individuals do not have their own achievements. These individuals do not have their own economic plan for pe people in the African-American community. The only thing that they do is criticize. The only thing that they do is push this line item that if you do not smell like incense all the time and don't take baths, walk around stinking, that somehow you are not pro-black enough, that somehow you are not African enough for them. But you have to ask yourself the question, well, what makes you so quote-unquote African? Because I know people from the continent. You know, my sister's husband is from Nigeria. We had a bunch of Ghanaians at the house last night, and they don't talk about pan-Africanism. They don't talk about Africanism. They don't talk about even nationalism. They talk about tribe. So when I see you walking around with a 
hemic cloth on from Egypt and you got on a a shanty rag and then you're speaking some Kwanzaa stuff that's in Swahili from Zaire. What are you talking about? You look foolish. You don't know what the hell you're talking. It's like somebody walk around with some Adidas shoes on and some Nike pants and a Reebok shirt and an Under Armour hat. You look like a dang fool. If you do not become completely entrenched, don't tell me four or five words in a different language that you found out about and you heard somewhere you read on a Cracker Jack box. Read me a sentence. Read me a book. Become fluent in the language. Become fluent in the history. Because otherwise, you're no different than those who seek to, to colonize us. They do not teach Af actual African traditions. They don't teach actual African religions. They don't teach actual African history. They teach you mysticism. They teach you some strange form of almost voodoo. Because if you actually want to know about the history of Africa, you could just download a book. You could just look at the 1897 massacre in Benin. You could look at the British sacking of Eif. You could look at the history of the Gold Coast or the Ivory Coast or Cote d'Ivoire. You could find out about the, the Zulu massacre. They don't want you to actually know that. They want you to believe in burning incense. They want you to believe in things which did not. Uh, this is the funniest thing that I've heard over the, over the holiday break. I heard a brother talking to me about polygamy, and he ain't got no job. Look, the, the whole idea behind polygamy is you get to have as many women as you can support. So any woman who has to go to work, that's not polygamy. Now, you pimping, brother. Now, you you, you a master at the game. I ain't, I ain't knocking you for that. I'm not hating on you for that. If you can get three, four women to pay all your bills, then more power to you, my brother. But don't call that polygamy. That's not polygamy. What that is is pimping. Now, what's pimping, pimping? But if you are sitting around somewhere and you got three, four women going to work to pay your bills, you're not a polygamist. You're a pimp. And so they will tell these women that, well, in the African tradition, in our society, what we do is a man must have a large family. No, that's not how it works. The king has a large family. You know, if you were to transport, or transport that idea to America, well, I'm a lawyer. I have a radio show. You know, I'm an upstanding member of the community. I'll get three, four, five wives. Obama is a constitutional law professor. He's the president of the United States of America. He'll get about 30 wives. You are a janitor at Waffle House. You don't get a wife. Not being mad at you, not hate on, not saying that blue collar jobs are a bad thing. But in order, if you want to tell people about these African traditions, well, the people at the bottom of the totem pole don't get the same benefits as the people at the top of the totem pole. So we have this perverted idea of our history, this perverted idea of what makes us us. So. So, do y'all see the parallels? I tell you, these Hebrew and Hotep hustlers. I'm a hustler. I'm a, I'm a hustler. That's all it is. And they be suckering these women into that stuff, too. They be getting y'all. Y'all better get your minds right. My queen. Yeah, right. As soon as you women hear somebody call you a queen, you better run. You're aqua. You, uh, you're going to be put to work. Shoot. The Lord is strict about his laws. That's what I want to start to say. The Lord is strict about his laws. His, God's laws mean self-improvement and empowerment. That's what his laws are for, for us to improve our lives and empower ourselves. That's what his laws are about. So I expect the Khmer community to be exactly as they are today, unruly, 
unlawful, hateful. They constantly teach the lie that Moses, watch this what I'm about to say. The, the, the Hotep community constantly teaches the lie that Moses plagiarized the Ten Commandments. Have y'all heard that before? We're going we gonna to kill that thought right now. We got to kill. Can you pull up the article for me? 42 principles of Ma'at. We got to kill this stupidity. I can't take it. Here we go. This is where they say Moses, who was a prince in Egypt, they say, if he existed, my brother. They say his Ten Commandments, he copied from the 42 principles of Ma'at. Go down, go down. The 42 principles, let's go down, let's go down. I'm not reading all this foolishness. I just want to get to their principles. Go ahead, go down. Wait, 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 go back up. Let's read some of these principles. And let's see how many of them the whole type community actually keeps. I want you to think of all the all videos right? with them. Think of the videos of the things, the slander, the hatred, the, the accusations of thievery and robbery, mm. the adultery going on, Big the time. dealing with prostitute. Watch. Can y'all dig it? Let's see if they keep any of their 42 principles. Okay, number one. I'm just going to read it. I have, done, I have not done iniquity. I have not robbed with violence. I have not stolen. I have not made any to suffer pain. I have not defrauded offerings. I have done no murder nor bid anyone to slay on my behalf. I have not trimmed the measure. I have not spoken lies. I have not robbed God. I have not caused the shedding of tears. I have not dealt deceitfully. I have not acted guilefully. All the Negroes in the room is gone. They ran out. <laughs> You start reading it, they all gone. Ain't nobody left in the room but the cricket. And nothing's left. <laughs> I have not laid waste to the land. I have not set my lips against anyone. I have not been angry or wrathful without a just cause. I have not lusted nor defiled the wife of any man. I have not polluted myself. I have not caused right, drugs. I have not caused terror. I have not done that which is abominable. I have not multiplied words exceedingly. I have never... Oh, Lord, Emma, that's a big one. I have never uttered fiery words. I have not judged hastily. I have not transgressed nor have I vexed or angered God. I have not stopped my ears against the words of right and truth. I have not burned with rage. I have not worked grief. I have not acted with insolence. I have not avenged myself. I have not stirred up strife. I have not been an eavesdropper. I have not wronged the people. I have done no harm, nor have I done evil. I have not worked treason. I have, not, I have never fouled the water. <laughs> I have not spoken scornfully. I have never cursed God. I have not behaved with arrogance. I have not envied wrongs to another. I have not filched food from the mouth of it, the infant. I have done no hurt unto man nor wrought harm unto beast. I have never magnified my condition beyond what was fitting. Mm, 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 mm. They are guilty of guilty all 42 of them. Guilty. So now, mm. I'm going to read this next part. Here's a different translation showing how they correlate with the Ten Commandments. Moses, if he existed, there's no undisputed historical archaeological evidence that he did was an Egyptian. According to stories, he was adopted by an Egyptian royal family. If that were true, he would have been familiar with these principles. If there was no historic Moses, then others most likely borrowed a few, a few if the principles of Ma'at when composing the Ten Commandments. So the 42 commandments of ancient Egypt, now the highlighted ones that are in bold letter, Indeed. are the, there's eight of them. Okay, go back up. Let me see. Does it mention the eight? Go back up, go back, let me see something. No, go back down. Okay. Here's a different translate how they correlate with the Ten Commandments. There are eight main ones that they say copy the Ten Commandments. So we're going to touch on those ten. It's written more understood, understood English. So the first one. Thou shalt not kill nor bid anyone to kill. Moses lived during the time of Ramses II, from the time of Seti to the time of Ramses. Okay, give me Genesis 4, 8 through 10. Let's see if that law came before Egypt was a power in the earth. Let's see. I don't know. I'm not that smart. The book of Genesis, chapter 4 and verse 8. We're going to read 8 through 10. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. 
And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. So the fact that Abel, I mean, Cain killed Abel and hid the body. Do you think that Cain knew the law about not killing? Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. And from the face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. So proving there was more people on the earth other than Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. So remember, Abel was just killed, so that would mean Adam, Eve, and now it's just Cain. It says, Cain just said, read that part again, whosoever. And whoso. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. So it obviously was more people than Adam and Eve, Cain. Everybody see that, right? So he said, whoever finds me shall kill me. What was he basing that on? Let's go to Genesis 9 and 6. This is when Noah got off the ark. Genesis 9 and verse 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood. By man shall his blood be shed. So Cain obviously knew that law. Everybody understand? Everybody see that? So the law of thou shalt not kill was way before Egypt. Okay, let's read on the score. Back up here, number two. This is the second negative, my art thing. Thou shalt not commit adultery or rape. Okay, they said that came about during the time of Egypt. Let's find out. Give me Genesis 2.24. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Now, adultery is breaking the law of marriage. That's all it's talking about. Go ahead. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. You see the part, cleave to his wife, there shall be one flesh. That means <laughs> one woman for every man. Everybody see that? Give me Genesis 3, 16 now. Genesis 3, verse 16. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. Your desire, meaning all that you desire, whether it be sex, understanding, knowledge, shall be to her what? Husband. Her husband. Go ahead. And he shall rule over thee. And the husband shall. So do you think they understood about adultery? Was Eve able to go, well, I'm going to go deal with this other man. Although the Lord said, my desire shall be unto you, I'm my desire to this other dude over here. Do you think they understood the law of adultery? Yes, they had to understand it. Watch this, Genesis 20, verse 7. I believe this is the far, forefather Isaac, I think. Um, look at it. 20 and 7. Is it Isaac or Abram? It might be Abram. I ain't... Abraham. Abram, okay. This is when uh, Abimelech, was going to deal with his wife. Watch this. Genesis 20 and 7. Now therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know that thou, thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. So do you think they understood the law of adultery back then? Obvious. It's obvious. When you read on, he got mad at Abram for saying you... You told me that this was your sister. And you didn't tell me this was, they understood, thou shalt not commit adultery. What are we proving? The laws preceded Ma'at in Egypt. The laws were there before Moses. Our people, people stop listening to Negroes. Let's go down to the next one. It's highlighted. Go down. Go down. Okay, number 10. Thou shalt not steal, nor take that which does not belong to you. Give me Genesis 31, 32. This is, again, before Moses, before Ma'at in Egypt. The book of Genesis, chapter 31, verse 32. With whomsoever thou, fi thou findest thy gods. Because uh, he had... Idol, idol, idol gods, little statues of false gods. Go ahead. Let him not live. Before our brethren discern thou what is thine with me, and take it to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. Jacob didn't know that his wife had stolen the idols. So do you think they understood what stealing was? Yes, they understood what it was. Whether they kept it is another story. But I'm showing you these laws were there before Egypt was a power. Give me the next one. Um, verse it's number 14, the law that's highlighted. Number 14. 
Okay, 14 and 15 are the same. Thou shalt not bear false witness, nor support false allegations. Then the other one, 15, thou shalt not lie, nor speak falsely to hurt the hurt to the hurt of another. Those are the same. Give me Genesis 27, 12. Again, Genesis 27 is before Ma'at in Egypt, before Moses. Genesis 27 and verse 12. My father, peradventure, will feel me, and I, will sh and, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. You see the term deceiver there? Meaning what? What does deceiver translate to? A liar. He said, you're going to put a curse on me. When you read on, she says, no, let whatever curse comes, this is a mama speaking. She said, let it be on me because she knew the prophecy. But I'm showing you, they understood about lying. They understood what a lie was. Why? Because the laws were already there from the time of Adam. We're going to show you that too. Give me the next highlighted one. Highlighted one. Go down. It should be uh, 28. Yeah, right there. 28, right there. Thou shalt not take God's name in vain. Give me Genesis 6 and 5. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So how are they to determine what was evil? In order to know something is evil and wicked, you got to have what? Laws. You see how these comedic people are simple as hell. I can't take them. Go down now to the next one, 32. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. Now, we just read an example of that with uh, Rachel, right? With, the, with the, the idols, right? So that was Genesis 31, 32. Uh, now, we could have stayed in the history with Adam and Eve, but watch this. Go to 34. Thou shalt remember and observe the appointed holy days. Huh. Give me Genesis 2 and 1. This is way before Egypt was even a thought. <laughs> People are simple as hell. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So that was the beginning of what, brothers? The Sabbath. The Sabbath day. That was the first holiday God ordained. Now, did they keep it? Here's a, let's go to Genesis 4, 3, and 4. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 3. And in, the prost and in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So now, watch this. Somebody may say, well, brother, how do you know that he offered that on a Sabbath day? Because now when you go to what Moses said, give me Numbers 28 and 10. Start at night, read 9 and 10. Let's see what was commanded on the Sabbath day. Numbers 28 and 9. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot, <laughs> and two tenth deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil, and the drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath, beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. Go back to Cain and Abel now. You see, I'll be, I'll be the Negro. That's, you got to stay away from some of them. They ain't right in the head. Go ahead. Genesis. You get it again. Genesis 4 verse 3 and in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord and Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof we just read that in uh, numbers it's the same thing on what day the Sabbath day go ahead and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering so God accepted Abel's animal offering go ahead but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. Because he wanted to offer up fruits and vegetables. The Lord didn't command that. So, give me Isaiah 30. Now that was it. Go, go down. Was there any more highlighted? Go down. Go down in case I forgot something. No, that was it. And then it goes further down and it says, if thou would have done well, would not have thou been accepted? That's telling you that he knew the law. Exactly. Exactly. So stop listening to these hotep hustlers that teach the lie. 
that the law came from Moses and before Moses there was no law. That's a lie. <laughs> Give me that Genesis 2, 7. I'm sorry. That is a lie, these people. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. See that part where it says and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Now give me that precept for I think it's Proverbs 7 and 2. Proverbs 7 verse 2. Keep my commandments and live and my law as the apple of thine eye. See that? Keep my commandments and live. That gives you life. Let's prove that. Let me give me some more. Second Ezra 3 and 5. Second Ezra chapter 3 and verse 5. And gave us a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hands. And didst breathe into him the breath of life. And he was made living before thee. Come on. And thou lettest him into paradise, which thy, which thy right hand had planted before ever the earth came forward. Mm, and that's unto, about the garden. Go ahead. And unto him thou gavest commandment. And unto Adam... Thou gave commandment. Go ahead. To love thy way, uh -huh. which he transgressed. He broke the commandments. That's what it's saying. So Adam had commandment. Stop listening to these whole tap hustlers and that garbage of 42 negative confessions of my heart. It's BS. Read on. Which he transgressed. And immediately thou appointest death in him and his generations, of whom came nations, tribes, people, and kindreds out of number. Here come. And every people walked after their own will and did wonderful things before thee and despised thy commandments. Stop. Listen, who can think what that's really saying? How did the people that came despise the commandments? How did they hear about the commandments? Hello, anybody got a clue? Adam taught everybody God's commandments. This is way before Egypt was a thought. Adam, tell about Adam. Adam taught all the people the law and says these people transgressed. Everybody see that? that Stop listening to these hotep hustlers. They dumb as a rock. That's why the scripture said, and Adam also whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures because he was Lord over everybody because it was his job to teach everybody. Right. Hey, um, can you read Genesis 10 and 1? Because you're going to find certain things that mention commandments and so forth you're gonna find you're gonna find them a lot of you're gonna find some mention of the commandment in any ancient text you understand but what you all got to understand is that that ain't came from egypt it ain't came from the whatever ancient country you could you won't find back then it go all the way back to genesis it go all the way back to to, to noah because guess what after the flood who repopulate who repopulate the earth noah's sons right didn't you do, read that right there? Genesis 10 and 1. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So Shem, Ham, and Japheth, they repopulated the earth. You understand? And no guess what? Noah was a preacher of e righteousness. Exactly. Noah taught his sons God laws. Right. You understand? So when, when, when you hear about the Egyptian... The, the, for, the confession, what, what do you call it? The 42 confession? Yeah, 42 the 40, negative. Ne yeah, the whatever. 42 negative confession, whatever it is, they learned that from Ham. You understand? That's who they learned it from. That's, right. That's why when you go to Genesis 11, it tells you when, um, when, 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 when Abraham went to the Egyptian land, um, to Egypt, the, the Mosai came onto the, 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 the Pharaoh and said, because because Abraham had lied and said, "Listen, I don't want to. This this is my sister. You understand?" And the most I came onto the Egyptian Pharaoh and said, "Listen, don't touch Abraham's wife, otherwise he put a plague on the house." Mm -hmm. And then he turned around. The the Pharaoh turned around and said, "Yo, why you did this? You know how most sleep with your wife?" And the Lord said, "Because the how how does he know that he don't supposed to sleep with the man wife? Because that was always instituted." You understand? The laws of the Mosai was instituted from the beginning. But a lot of us, were, as we read, a lot, of the a, lot of, a lot of us went off and did our own wicked wickedness. Exactly. Get Isaiah 30. We're going to read 1 through 5. So again, these hotep hustlers are a sham. The point is they hate, not only do they, the reason they don't want to admit they Israel, because they don't want to keep what? God's laws. 
And we just showed you they don't even keep their own laws. <laughs> it goes back to Negroes being undisciplined. That's what it's about. They don't like structure, order, nothing. That's what it is. It doesn't matter who said them. They ain't about the laws. They're not about discipline. They're about being loose Negroes. That's right. Watch this. Read on. Isaiah 30 and 1. Woe to the rebellious children. What does God call us? We are the rebellious children. The 12 tribes of Israel, we are the rebellious children. Go ahead. Saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. Right. We seek counsel, but not of God, meaning we reject the Bible. We go to the Gilgamesh epics and go, look, in the Gilgamesh epics, my brother, there's a flood. So how could there be a flood in the Gilgamesh epics and you got one in the Bible? That means somebody copied somebody. Not knowing the ancient history that, as Deacon Malachi brought out, Noah taught his sons. His sons lived through the flood. When they scattered, remember the nations were separated. Every nation taught about the flood. Why? Because Ham taught his generations. Japheth taught his. Shem taught his. Read on. And that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. Right. We cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. We want to put on kente cloth. We want to put on a big black, black power fist. So when the national anthem started playing, I was not looking at the ground. I was praying the Lord's Prayer. My head bowed and my fist went up in the air. I wore black gloves to represent social power or black power. I wore socks, not shoes, to represent poverty. I wore a black scarf around my neck to symbolize the lynching, the hangings that black folks went through while building this country. <laughs> We cover with everything but what the Bible says. We want to smell like incense all day. <laughs> Read on, I'm sorry. That they may add sin to sin. What's that part again? That they may add sin to sin. Our people, we add sin to sin. Go ahead. That walk to go down into Egypt. Hotep hustler. You know, Hotep just means uh, peace. It's same as shalom, means peace. So we walk to go down. We love the Egyptian history. Nobody want to be, what's the African group with the plate in their lip? And a big, the, no, they got a big plate. They can eat off that thing. Nobody want to be that group. I forgot the name of that group. The Bush people. Nobody want to be them Hamites. Everybody want to be the distinguished Egyptians. You know, Egypt had different families that run up, different nations that ran up and rule that thing. But don't ask these hotel hustlers. They'll make you think it was just all black people. They won't mention the Arabs that went in there and conquered. They don't mention the Ptolemy era dynasty. No, just this particular group of Africa. What about them other? Because there's about 3,000 tribes in Africa. Okay. In a group that got the big, them round things in their ears, they got the thing in their nose. Something go through their nose like this. Yeah, that right there. Imagine kissing that. But nobody want to be that. Nobody want to be that. You know, find me one with a plate. I see one with a plate. That's Kush. Yeah, 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 yeah look at that. You can eat. Sisters, you don't never have to bring a plate out to us. Just put it on our lip. Plop, plop, plop. Nobody want to be that. Nobody wants to be that one by Don't get me wrong. You know there's Negroes watching this as mad as hell at us. But they won't do that. Right. They won't do that. They won't do that. Dag, that, they got that one divided for the food on one side and water on the other. Look at that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, they, I'm going to get hate mail. I know I'm going to get hate mail. Hate, 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 hate. So, uh, back to Isaiah 30. What verse you at, Cap? I'm sorry. Isaiah 30 and verse 2. That walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at the mouth, at my mouth. Our people never sought counsel from the God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We always went to some other God. Let me see what Ra says. Let me see what Isis says. Let me see what uh, Akhenaten, or, no, that was a pharaoh. Tammuz. Tammuz, or give me another Egyptian God. I can't even think of them, them names. Lupus. Not lupus. Jeb, thank you. Ain't lupus a disease? No, lupus. The next thing on yellow, Zika. That might be an Egyptian god, too. <laughs> Ebola is an Egyptian god. Um, read on. And have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. That's what these Negroes do, our people. We try to strengthen ourselves in the strength of Pharaoh. Go ahead. 
And to trust in the shadow of Egypt. And our people trust, because they, real Egypt, guess what, brothers and sisters? It don't exist no more. It's gone. It was conquered, overthrown. The ancient Egyptians, you had the Watusis, you had some of the people of the Sudan. They ain't ruling. The Arabs whooped them and pushed them all out. Said, no, <laughs> this is my land now. Get out. All the Arabs took it. They took it. The Arabs is in this, destroying some of the pyramids. Read that again. And to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Go ahead. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. So just as it was back then, so it is, in, so it is today. The strength of Pharaoh shall be our shame. Go ahead. And the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. That's why people are so confused. They can never, these hotep hustlers can never come together, organize nothing. Never benefit the people, nothing. One iota. Go ahead. For his princes were at Zoan. And his ambassadors came to Hanes. Hanes, that was in the past, historically. Go ahead. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them. Our people were ashamed back then. Our people today are ashamed now. Go ahead. Nor being help, nor profit, but a shame, and also a reproach. So now, give me Romans 12. Let me tell you about the laws of God in brief. I always joke about the Hotep and Hebrew community. I always joke about it because they're very similar. You can draw parallels, okay? They pride themselves on being, one group uses the word conscious. The Israelite community uses the word awoke. I'm awake. You awoke, my brother. But all in all, each group, they argue, debate, slander, filled with hate, 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 hate. You see that parallel in both of them, both of them. And they argue and say, my philosophy is better than your philosophy. But I'm going to tell you the philosophy that's missing out of both communities. God's laws. Give me that Romans 12 and 2. This is what God's laws do. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. Go ahead. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The the laws of God is meant to renew your mind. Go ahead. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Re read, read that again, that verse. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Stop. Y'all see that word transformed? That means changed. If you, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, something. If you still the same grimy, unkempt, uncouth, whoremonger brother or sister as you was when you first came in, you're wasting your time here. You might as well join the comedic community. No change at all. The Bible is about transformation. The Bible is about self-development. The Bible is about improving your life. Why? To prepare ourselves for the second coming. Read the whole verse again. And be not conformed to this world, uh -huh. but be transformed. Transform means changed. Born again. Converted. Go ahead. By the renewing of your mind. Your whole way of thinking should change. You got to put off all the negative sins, all those sins that's within, in you, and get, uh, get them out. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind must change. No longer jumping from woman to woman, you hustlers out there, and you sisters no longer jumping from rod to rod to rod. That life got to end. It got to change. We have to truly change. Read again. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know what? In order to prove, see that word prove. In order to prove what is that, what, read that part again. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In order for you to prove that, in order for us to prove that, we have to be changed. We have, to have, we have to be changed and apply the laws of God to our life. That's how you prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If you're not living it, you're not proving nothing. You're just whistling Dixie. You're just talking smack. You might as well go on a stage and just talk, 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 talk. Pay me, pay me $3,000 for a debate and just talk your talk. Talk your talk, nigga. Talk your talk. Talk your speech. That's all they do. So the Hotep community does it just as the Hebrew community does the same thing. And, the, and, and we're going over this 
not out of hatred, but so that we can all come to the understanding that the Bible is the only true book. We must apply what is written to our lives, or we're no different than our brothers and sisters that's in the Hotep community. We're no different than them, okay? We have to show and prove. Read that part again about prove. And su- that, ye that, ye, prove. that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see that? So we have to be, our minds must be transformed. Our minds. So day after day, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. What do you hear? Debate, debate, debate. Hate, hate, hate. Slander, slander, slander in both the Hotep community as well as the Hebrew, quote unquote, Hebrew community. No true organizing, no structures, no unity. Biblically, we've always loved drama. Black people, Latin people, you ever see when something pop off? Like World Star. You ever see World Star? How many views and hits? And Jerry Springer is a, almost a billionaire based on the drama of black Latinos. Exactly. He learned the Negro. Exactly. And, he, and he built his whole program, Maury Povich, right. all of them. They said, study the Negro. That's what's in that book um, <clears throat> called uh, uh, The Miseducation of the Negro. He said that the people, they don't study economics and all that. They study the Negro. Right. And then they build their empire just by watching how we act. Mm-hmm. It's a shame. But that's exactly what they've done. Right, exactly. So, biblically, we've always loved drama. We always love to hear. That's what the bait's about. I want to hear a new doctrine right. that you got. You ever watch some of them things? Everybody in the audience goes, ooh. Nobody ever repents out of those debates, those lectures. Nobody ever changes their life. The only thing they do is wear incense, say hotep, and wear kenti cloth. <laughs> That's all they do. And they got mixed up languages with Swahili and all these other different things. They try to mix in and say they're pro-African. You bunch of liars. Give me Acts 17. I'm going to show you about the history that we love to hear new doctrines. Acts 17. Acts 17. We are going to read 19 through 21. Now, what we are about to read, let me set it up for y'all because y'all may have may or may have not have read it. Have read it. I'm going to inform the apologetics community and I'm going to inform the Hotep community that the Israelites, the Jews, are black. And we did live in both Greece and Rome. And I'm going to prove it. Acts 17 and verse 19. And they took him and brought him unto our Eopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Y'all see that? So the Athenians, these were Jake. These were our people. They loved to hear new doctrines. They would go to the, the, the uh, what's that thing called? The Colosseums and all that. Mm-hmm. Or here they called it the area area. Areopagus, thank you. And they would sit there, hear new doctrines, and con, 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 Adawan, con, con, and clap and hotep all night. That's what they would do. Mm. Now, right now, the apologetics, apologists, and the hoteps are saying, these is white folks. Black people was never over there. Oh, you know, our people are simple as hell. We are simple as hell. First, give me uh, Acts 18 and 2. I'm going to show you where was there. The book of Acts 18 and 2. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontius, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. So Claudius Caesar made an edict to get all the Jews out of Rome. We were in Rome. Okay, now, can I prove these things, down, these profound statements? Give me... Give me uh, black the book Blacks in Antiquity. Oh yeah, you got that book. Yeah. Snowden, right? I want the cover. Just put the cover up first. It's orange. Right. Right. That's the book here. There, I got it here. So, this is called Blacks in Antiquity. 
by Frank M. Snowden Jr. Now, what I want to do, let's look at some of the images in the book. Go ahead. Let's go to the first one. Okay. That, let me see what page that was on. Let me look. I'm going to put that page back. Let me look. I want it in order, though. I gave it to y'all in order. Let me look. Right the way he gave them? Okay. Mm -hmm. Bear with me a second. Okay. Y'all can zoom in. Zoom in on the bottom. Zoom in on the bottom right there. Bronze statue of a boy, Hellenistic. Hair and long spiral curls close to head. Very broad nose, rather thick lips. Now, the, re the word we want to tune in is the word Hellenistic. Can we look up that word Hellenist? Can we look it up? And let's look at the image now. Go back to the image. Pull down. Who got a Bible dictionary? Bible dictionary. Let's read what it says about Hellenists. Somebody help me. He certainly doesn't look like Jeb Bush. Not at all. Hellenists, Jews who made Greek their tongue. You heard that, Hellenists, Jews that made Greek their tongue. This is a Hellenist right there. Jews that made Greek their tongue. Let's go to the next picture, please. So the Jews were black. That's right. The That's Jew what you look at that. Hey, hey, Vocab Malone. What's the other Edomite's what name? Doing, right. Uh, James Esau. James Esau, we got bad news for you. <laughs> Uh, let's zoom in on that one, number 53. Zoom in. I'm going to see the words. I want the nerve, the words. Okay. Small bronze bust of Negro. Roman. Remember we read about the Jews who pushed out of Rome? Yep. yep. Hey, oh, oh, ho, 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 ho. Here we go. Boom. Hair in form of thick mass of short curls, broad nose, thick lips. That's us. That's us. You don't get lips thicker than ours, nose bigger than ours, breathing up all the white man's hair. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the next picture, please. Yes. Oh, here's another one. I know y'all don't like dreadlocks, but we did wear them back then. Let's zoom in. Word. Let's zoom in. Bronze statuette, perhaps of a street singer. Looks at the word. Hellenistic. Can we read that again? Hellenist, please. One more again. Come on. Shem got one right there next to him. Come on, y'all. Where is it? Hellenist. Jews who made Greek their tongue. Hellenists, Jews that made Greek their tongue. So these were black people in Greece that spoke Hebrew because they were, were the Jews. That's right. Let's look Jews. at it. Let's go back to the top of that. I'm going to look at that. Yeah, look at these. Look at this. Look at the nose. Look at the lips. Look at the hair. So the Jews are black. The Jews are black. Let's go to the next picture. Now, they, they can't say that we doctored this. No, no. These are statues. Right. These aren't drawings. J James, Bronze e statues. James Esau got this book in his, in his library. Yeah. He's got it. He's just being the devil that the Bible speaks of. He <laughs> don't want to talk about nobody. He don't want to talk about it. This, Yamasab, this is in the Smithsonian. So, one of the most astute places right, right, exactly. on archaeology. Let's zoom in. Can y'all dig it? Bronze statue of a boy, perhaps also an orator. Hellenistic. Can we read that one more again? Mm -hmm. Hellenists, Jews who made Greek their tongue. See that? The Grecians, thank you. Tightly curled, short hair, round face, neither lips nor nose, extreme. Some subnasal prognathism, whatever that word is. Stomach somewhat protruding. But we can see this is a black child. Okay, let's go to the next one. Hence, the name of the book is Blacks in exactly. Antiquity. Now, this is about, this is the, 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 zoom in on the words so I can see it. The words, right. Marble sarcophagus, this is, this is a, a sarcophagus is a, like a burial thing. Uh, 180 to 200 AD. Depicting triumph of Bacchus. Remember in the book right. of Maccabees? Right. They forced us to celebrate Bacchus. Bacchus. Right. It says, with two Negro boys astride a pair of panthers. Zoom down to the bottom. Go to the bottom. Right there. See the panthers? Zoom in. Everybody's the Edomite, but they got these two black boys right there on top of the panthers. Remember, they were forcing us to celebrate their days Do when you read in the this? book of Maccabees. Right. And these today, are the things they did. Today we're doing it under what's called Bacchanal. Right, exactly. Same garbage. Exactly. 
All right, let's go. Is there another picture after that? Okay, I don't want that one yet. Okay, stop. Stop right there. So, I heard on a debunking thing, because you did ex- y'all did an excellent job. I heard, I heard it was almost 18 hours, and people who fell asleep, they, they got to see it again because everyone fell asleep. Captain Zeph is chopping it up. Oklahoma cut the video off. Tallahassee, they said, we can't take it. It's, it's too long. They said it's too long. They couldn't take it. They'd be all right. Now, in the thing, the, the Edomite said black people were never in Greece and Rome. We just proved them a liar. Okay. Then, watch this. Jay, one of them, uh, yeah, was that Edomite? Same one, BHI. He goes, black people, James White, I think, said it too. He said, black people did not run from Jerusalem into Africa. They said there's no Jews on the West Coast because they, never, they never ran down there. Can we read Luke 21? And then I'm, gonna sh- I'm going to prove, prove what we have to say according to the Bible. Don't worry, brothers and sisters. We in, the Lord is not going to allow us to be debunked by anybody. Understand that. The you better thing, put some respect on it. Y'all better understand. Because uh, the more we read this Bible, the more we're taking chapters and books away from the Edomites. After we break down the scriptures correctly, they can no longer go back in here and read it again. Like Obadiah, that's a book that they have to completely get rid of. They can't touch that. (laughs) Read that. Luke 21 and 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. When you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, so what armies? The Roman armies. What year? 70 AD. Go ahead. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountain. Flee to the mountains. Translation, run to Africa. I'm going to prove it. I am going to prove it. Hold that. How do I know flee to the mountains means Africa? Give me Matthew 2.13. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it. Go ahead. Keep playing with us. You devils keep playing. Matthew 2.13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord. Go ahead. Appeareth to Joseph in a dream, Uh saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. In case you don't know geography, Egypt is on the northeast side of Africa. Go ahead. And be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod. For Herod, the white man, the devil. Will seek the young child to destroy him. Will seek the young child to kill him. Now, let's go back to Luke 21, 24. Luke 20. You want to skip all the way down to 24, Bishop? No, no. Read it. Where were you at? 21. Go ahead. Luke 21, 20. Luke 21 and verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. And let them which are in the midst of it right, depart out. Right, this is out. a map here. In case y'all confused, we put a map on the screen. Thank y'all. You see Egypt, the northeast side of Africa. So don't, I'm so confused. Where's Egypt at? Right. The white man told me everybody's white over there. Read on. And let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. Because they blocked us off from getting food and water for seven years. It forced us to go into cannibalism. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The Israelites that get caught shall fall by the... Those of you that don't run, you shall fall by the edge of the sword. And shall be led away captive into all nations. Those of you Israelites that get caught, you're going to be made slaves. Where? Into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. The white man shall trodden Jerusalem. The white man shall rule Jerusalem. That's what happened in 70 AD. So now, did we just read read what Christ commanded them to flee to the mountains, right? The devil said there's no Jews in Africa, no black Jews in Africa. I don't know if y'all have seen the video. Give me the map, the 1700 map. I'm going to piss everybody now, now, off. Now you done messed them up because they, they, they mind going to mess up. And guess what? If our printer works, we can print it out and give them all copies if they want. This map was done in the 1700s. Let's zoom in. I got to zoom in. I got to see the words. Go down to the Gold Coast. You see Gold Coast right there. See that? Gold Coast. Zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. 
Now, next to it, do y'all see next to the Gold Coast what it says? Slave Coast. No, no, right next to it, above it, it says, see it says proper Kingdom of Judah or Weda Slave Coast. I'm going to read it again. Kingdom of Judah or Weda, Wida, W H I D A, Slave Coast. Y'all see that right there? It says Judah on the bottom and Judah at the top. Right. So the white man is a liar. He's the devil the Bible speaks of. Tell him where this. He ain't debunking nothing. Hey, that's crystal clear. Where, where's that map from again? That's the 1700s. 1700s. So and the white got, man knew the Jews had fled and went down in there. You see that? That's crystal clear. That And this right here, right, thank you, highlighted right, right there. I know some of your heart is seeing. This was the last kingdom that retained the name. Because after that, in Benin, in Benin they had Fort Judah. There's right. a book that tells you that Fort exactly. Judah and Benin, and they brought slaves over there. Okay. Then after that, they got rid of this name right there. There's no modern maps that say Kingdom of Judah. But guess what? The Gold Coast is filled with them. All around the West Coast is the Jews. The rest of them got rid of the name. They said, we don't want nobody to know we're the Jews. There you go. Our people was trying to hide and blend in. Oh, come on. Right. Oh, come on. Let's right. learn that language. Right. Booga, booga, booga. Hey, and Deacon Nathan, you brought that information out in, in that other book because it said that because they would be, the Jews would be persecuted. Persecuted. Yeah. So and, they, um, and they went and hid it. Right. Babylon the Temple. Babylon it, it speaks about that in there. Right. Because Which is another book that this demon trying to debunk. Okay. It said the largest exodus was due to Arab invasion. So a lot of us converted to Islam. Right. So we would pretend to be Muslims, but then Ishmael would leave and we'll be Judah again. So we hid our under false names. Exactly. Exactly. So this was the last kingdom that had the name. So after this, all the maps after the 1700s, you don't see Judah or Weida, which when you look at Weida on, um, Weida on, uh, I believe it's Google, Wikipedia, one of those things, it'll tell you. Let's go there. Let's check it out just to verify. It might be with a Q. Type in Kuwaita with a Q. Q U I D A. It's going to say all of them at one time. Right. Cut through the nut. To the point. This is black history. This is black history. You spoiled it. I spoiled it. I'm sorry, brother. Hey, don't worry. We get them again. Yeah, but yeah. They okay. just get a double dose of it. <laughs> That's all. We're going to flood you with it. We're going to kill you with it. If you get a heart attack, sorry. Yeah, Q U I D A on Wikipedia. Sorry. Okay, put it on the screen. So when y'all look up, write this yeah, down. Uda with an O. O U I D A. See, it says the next translation, Weda. W H Y D A H. That's what we just saw on the map. Mm -hmm. And it's translated Judah. Okay, you see J U D A. That's what we just saw on the map by the French and a Judah. It's also called a Judah by the by the Portuguese. And that's in, uh, and that's in our other books. So we got the records where it yeah. says they fought Judah. Say, yeah, fought, right. fought Judah. Right. Fought Judah. Fought Judah. By the French. By the French. Mm -hmm. So we got the information on that. So what we're showing y'all is that we have the truth. The Spirit of God is working with us. All praises to the most. Like, can I get a con con? Con, not a one. Con, 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 Right there. <laughs> fort St. John, Baptist of Judah. <laughs> That's the fort. Say, Say it again. The slave fort. It's in Spanish. It's this right. fort of St. John the Baptist of Judah in Portuguese. Go down. Contents history number two. See, fort of St. John. That's, the same. That's, that's, that's it right there. Kingdom of Wider or Kingdom of Judah. Selling, it says, our wider troops pushed their way into the African interior, capturing millions of people through the tribal wars. That was him attacking us. You had the Ashanti come. When and you see the other video, they was mad. The Ashanti was doing all of the, the slave trade. Right. You had a lot, of, a lot of internal fighting. Right. Go ahead. And selling them to the European and Arabs, Europeans and Arabs. Exactly. But what happened was, like, like over here, you had Esau came, sort of infighting among the tribes of the Northern Kingdom, turned them against each other, and then overthrew them. Exactly. So when Ham, so when Jake was over here in the, in the land of Ham fighting each other, uh, Ishmael and Ham would help them overthrow us or each other, and then in turn enslave us also in the process. Right. That the kingdom was ruled. Right. Oh, no, okay, forget it. Go back to the map. Go Malachi. You're gonna say something. I want that to resonate in your heads. Can you highlight that again with the yellow? I like that. There you go. Malachi, what are you gonna say? Yeah, um, early on, you all, was, you all remember we was talking about what the elder mentioned that the apologetics, they said that um, you ain't had Jews in, in Greece, you ain't had Jews in Egypt and these other lands. They said that our people wasn't over there. But I got a scripture, um, 
Acts 21 and 38, 37. Because the Bible straight cut, cut all the doctrines on them that they bring forth, man. You know? Got it? Acts. Acts 21 and 37. Yeah. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, may I speak unto thee? So he's speaking unto the captain, uh, to the chief captain. You understand? But read on. Who said, canst thou speak Greek? So why is he asking him that? Because he spoke, well, how did Paul speak to him? He spoke to him in the Greek language. That's why the captain now was surprised. He's like, damn, this can, you could speak Greek? But read on. Art not thou that Egyptian, which before these days made us an uproar and led us out into the wilderness 4,000 men that were murderers? So he mistook Paul for what? For Egyptian. Why? Because, the way how, because he was a man of color. Because the way how we look. But read on. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus. So what Paul said? I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus. So Paul said he's a man... He's a Jew of what? Tarsus. So read that again. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia. It's uh, in Turkey. In Turkey. All right. So, so Paul, Paul was in one of them cities same way. You understand? Real, real quick, get Acts 6 verse 9. The problem is that Esau trusts that Negroes don't read the Bible. He just his uses his, his his paleness and he just believe what he says. His whiteness. Right. He ain't a walk on paleness. He ain't even that. That's a that's a compliment calling him white. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Cilicia was an early Roman province. Right. Located in what is today the southern coast of Turkey. Right. Okay. Act six and nine let's go with, this goes along with that. Act six verse nine. Act six verse nine. Then there, then there arose certain of the synagogue. These are the elders of the synagogue that were arguing back and forth for Stephen before they killed him. Go ahead. Which is called the synagogue of the Libertines. The synagogue of a place called Libertine. Go ahead. And the Cyrenians. Cyrenians is Libya. It's a Greek private, a Hellenistic town of Libya. That's Africa. Go ahead. And Alexandria. That's Alexandria, Egypt, which is right there. Next door. Go ahead. And of them of Cilicia. Right there is Turkey. Go ahead. And of Asia. Disputing with Stephen. So you had synagogues of Jews in Africa. So what these guys talking about? They think we don't read the Bible. That's their downfall. You still don't trust the niggas read. We read. We thorough. Stop. But these heathens underestimate us. They think, oh, these guys, these guys are just a bunch of niggas that want to belong somewhere. They just want to fit in. They just want to be special. No, no, no. We know what we're talking about. Yeah, you know, Deacon uh, Aton, they know we know. <laughs> you understand? And not that they don't know. They're, these white boys know we know. You understand? It's the, uh, you mean, it's the other people right. that they want to believe that we don't know. Right. You understand? Exactly. Let's go to the next book by Time Life Books. Yeah, this is by Amalek, the so-called Jews. Y'all can order this book. You it's know. called The Israelites. By Time Life Books, one of the most famous. It's the largest book publishing company on earth. <laughs> That's the book right there. Let's uh, delve into the book. Let's just take a gander what's in here. Well, all righty then. Y'all see this brown brother right here? Let's. This is chapter two. Let's zoom in for the words on the words. bottom right. Let's, let's get them words. Let's zoom in right there. <laughs> In this detail of an 1800 BC wall painting from the palace at Marie on the river Euphrates uh -oh, in Mesopotamia. You got to zoom in some more. They go, they go, they, yeah, they, they got stigmatism. Can y'all zoom in big on, on that? I don't know if you can. Okay. In this detail of an 1800 BC before 1800, Christ, 1800, 1800 years before Christ. Christ. Wall painting. Almost 2,000 years before Christ is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Wall painting from the palace at Marie on the river Euphrates in Mesopotamia. That's Iraq. A bull adorned with a white crescent and gilded horn tips is led to ritual slaughter by a Semitic tribes, meaning a Shemite. Yeah. Remember the dude was saying so we're not right. Semitic. There you go. He said we are Hamitic. Oh, he said the Semites are Caucasian. Right. The but, devil. But 1,800 years before Christ says different. Exactly. But let's read on. 
a Semitic tribesman wearing characteristic dress. Animal sacrifices to the gods were basic to Middle Eastern religions. When the Israelite patriarchs undertook to call upon their one god, they often did so after making a sacrifice. Let's see who the Semite is. Let's look. Is that a white boy right there? No. That's not a white boy. That don't look like, uh, what's his name, Bieber? What's that uh, kid's Justin name? Justin Bieber. That don't look like Justin Bieber to right. me. This is clearly and obviously a black man. Okay, let's go to the next picture. Oh, this is chapter three about Moses and the elders of the 12 tribes of Israel. Let's, let's read it before we, before we look at the picture. Let's read that right there. Painted in the third century AD, mm -hmm. which is Adonis Domini, which means year of our Lord. This fresco, more than four feet high, dramatizes a traditional view of Moses. A traditional. Not a new or rare. It's a tradition. Meaning, right. it was a tradition that right. Moses looked like this. Right. A traditional view of Moses, God-given powers, miraculously creating a well in the desert. He provides water for 12 tribesmen who, exhausted by the flight from Egypt, had lost confidence that he would save them. The work was discovered on the wall of a synagogue in Dura Europus. That's the same spot where those other people was at on the paintings on the walls. That's in Syria. An right. ancient city on a river Euphrates in Syria. There Tell you me. Go. Let's look at Moses. Let's zoom in. Let's zoom in. Let's zoom in on Moses. You can clearly see the afro. I clearly see the brown skin. Look at the skin complexion compared to the clothing. Okay. Look at the 12 tribesmen around the wall. Go, there's 12 of them all around. Levi standing in the court. And that's, that's water going out to each of them. Okay. Clearly black men. Let's go on to the next. And you see the menorah in the back. There's a menorah I thought I saw, right? Yeah, menorah right there. Bam. Black people. Black people and menorah don't mix. And you notice there's seven branches. It's not nine. Exactly. Seven branches. Let's go to the next picture. Oh. Oh, oh, here's another one of Moses. The traditional look of Moses. I can't have out attack. Let's read this. During the exodus from Egypt. Is it on the screen? I want everybody online to read this. During the exodus from Egypt, Moses carries out the orders of his God, symbolized by the hands at the top of this drain by divine intervention, so that the remaining shallows team with jumping brown fish. Jumping brown fish. Right. We're going to compare the fish to Moses in a moment. Uh -oh. Lined up behind the vanguard of troops are the elders of, of the traditional 12 Israelite tribes. Mm. On the right hand, a second image of Moses appearing in the act of flooding the Red Sea again. Now that the Israelites are safe in the desert, thereby engulfing the Egyptians who pursued them, the four foot high fresco only, let's go over only a portion of which is reproduced here, there's only a portion reproduced here, was found in the ruins of a synagogue at the Syrian city of Dura Europus by a British, by the white man, mm -hmm. during World War I. They discovered this right. during World War I. The picture had unwittingly been preserved by the city's inhabitants in AD 256. The temple was located close to the town walls. In a last effort at defense, let's see what I want the rest of that, Against an advancing army, the citizens tore the roof from the building and filled the rooms with sand to make a deep barrier because the protective sand packed. When the British dug out the synagogue, the fragile paintings emerged, almost unscathed by the passage of some 17 centuries. <laughs> Let's look at the picture. Let's look at the picture. Let's look at the picture. <laughs> Wait a minute. First off, Let's go to the, the hand. Look at the hand of the hand. Do y'all see the hand of God? But let's look at the fish first. That's what you got to look at. Go down to the fish. He said teams of jumping br brown fish. Go down. No, to the, oh yeah, right there. So if those fish are brown. Right. If those fish are brown, it's obviously a light brown. Right. Let's go up to Moses and the Israelites' faces. It's deeper brown. Do y'all right. see that? Yeah, got it. Do y'all see the afro? Do you see the woolly textured hair in the paintings? It doesn't look like Charleston Heston, does he? Not at all. Not at all. Look at the 12 tribe leaders on the that way, right there, right there. Those are the Israelite leaders and the Israelites, right? All black people. 
So what is the apologist talking about? What is your friend vocab talking about? What is the debunking talk? What are they talking about? No, 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 no. Are they on they, drugs? They are, they, are, they are a glutton for punishment. Look at the Egyptians drown on that side. Even they are brown, the same color as Moses and the Israelites. Do y'all see this? See, you ain't, you ain't debunking nothing. No, see, no, Somebody no. tell the devil you ain't debunking nothing. <laughs> Look at Moses. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Let's go to the next picture. Oh, masters. Wait, I want to see the words. Masters of the martial arts. Let's read down and see what this says. Yep, 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 yep. These two figures, an archer and a spearman, represent captives from Judah. Judah. <laughs> Who were impressed into... Thank you for highlighting. Yeah, thank you, brother. Some people can't read. You know, what? They don't say that. So that way the white man can see it says it too. Right. Who were impressed into service as bodyguards, like Zerubbabel, to the Assyrian king. This was Zerubbabel and them. After the capture of Lachish in 701 BC, their status is clear to scholars. Wait, their status is clear to scholars because though members of the former enemy's army, they still wear typical Israelite headgear. This detail is from a stone relief found at Nineveh, mm. that portrays a military procession celebrating King Sennacherib's, Sennacherib's victory. Let's look at these captives, these masters of the martial arts. Let's zoom in. Look at that. Powerful warriors. Look at those beads. Look at that. Look at that. Look like they got beads. You know the, right. remember the thing the women be wearing sometimes? Look like mm. that to me. There. But these are black men. Masters of the martial arts. Meaning they could right. throw down. Yep. Yep. This is some powerful. You ain't, see, we ain't being, the Lord ain't being debunked. I'll put it no, like that. No, no, God no, ain't no, being debunked. Right. Okay. Let's go over to the next picture. Oh, let's zoom in. Let's zoom into the words there. You already see the fringes right there. A detail of an alabaster freeze found at an Assyrian palace offers particulars of other ancient musical instruments. Okay, so when we go to the picture, we see that now this is, can we read numbers 15, Captain Isaac? Of and this is how we know how to wear our fringes. There you go. Not only does the Bible tell us how to wear it, right. the archaeology shows us how our forefathers wore They the understood the scriptures. Look at the cornrows in the hair. <clears throat> you can't get a white boy out of that. Yeah, blow it up big. Let's let's zoom in. Let's zoom in. Look at that. Right. Look at the hair. Come on. Thems is not white people's. Right. What was her name? Bo Derek. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what you're talking about. I know that so. old woman. Can you read that cap? <laughs> numbers. The book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 37. And the Lord spake unto Moses, zoom saying, the, Go down in the picture. I want their friend. Just come up. Read. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. This is how we know how to wear them. You see that? Yeah, I see that right there. Right there. Right. That's the four quarters all around me. Not, all not, around. not the shoestrings. Right. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Go ahead, read. Throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye use to go a whoring. So according to the Lord, I was the Lord that we wear fringes on our borders of our garments. Okay. And guess what? They're not homosexuals. Because I heard somebody say if you wear fringes like that or on your shirt or anything, you're, or you're, they use the F word faggot. But I'm like, what is wrong with some of these uh, Hebrew hustlers. Let's go. Is there another picture? Okay, so that was it. So now, let's go to Isaiah 51. Does the Bible prophesy our people would lose consciousness to who they are? That they need to become conscious and wake up? Does the Bible talk about that? Mm, let's see. 
let's see. Does the Bible talk? Well, let's go to Isaiah 51. I want to start at verse 13. Isaiah 51 and verse 13. And forgettest the Lord thy maker that hath stretched forth the heavens. So the Lord is talking about us, the Israelites. We forgot the Lord our maker. Go ahead. And laid the foundations of the earth mm -hmm. and hast feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor as if he were ready to destroy. Mm -hmm. And where is the fury of the oppressor? And where is the fury of the oppressor? You up verse you in, Captain? That was verse 13. Verse 13, go ahead. The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed. Our people hasten that we may be loosed. We want the Lord to hurry up. We want free, we want free, we want free. Go ahead. <laughs> and that he should not die in the pit. Our people don't want to die in the pit. Go ahead. Nor that his bread should fail. Our people definitely don't want our food to be cut off. Go ahead. But I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of his the Lord of hosts is his name. Go ahead. And I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. So Zion, which is another name for Israel, we are his people. Not Hotep, not Kemet, not Egypt. Read. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem. So the Lord is commanding us all to awake. Awake. So our prayer is that our brothers and sisters in the comedic community can awake. They always talk about they conscious or awake. The Bible commands us to awake, awake. Go ahead. Awake, awake. Stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Who can tell me what is the cup of the fury of the Lord that we drunk? Who can tell me? Yes. You. What is it? Shalom. Shalom. Slavery. Okay. Where can we read about that? Deuteronomy chapter 28. Right. So the cup of the Lord, the fury, is slavery, which is Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 down through 16, all of that. In verses 15 through 16, you read about slavery, you read about colonialism, you read about imperialism, which is very similar. So read that again. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. You know what the dregs are? You know after you finish drinking something, there's always some little drop at the bottom of the cup? The most high, the, right, the residue. The most high said we drunk every drop of Deuteronomy 28, 15 through. We drunk everything. There's not a verse that we skipped over. Lord said, no, I ain't going to put that on. He put everything on us that he said. Yes? Read on. There is none to guide her among all the sons whom she hath brought forth. So now the Lord says there is none to guide her among all the sons whom she hath brought forth. Go ahead. Neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she hath brought up. So he's letting us know there is a time when there would be no leadership in Israel. Why? Because we'd be following Hotep. We'd be following the image of the beast. We'd be following uh, uh, Rastafari. What's his name? Haley Selassie, I. We be following all these false religions. Go ahead. These two things are come unto thee. Who shall be sorry for thee? So the Lord said, these two things shall come upon you. Who's going to feel sorry for the Israelites? Go ahead. Desolation. Desolation. That came upon us. We read that in Luke 21. Mm -hmm. Go and, ahead. And destruction. Destruction. That's what happened in Deuteronomy 20. Our enslavement was total destruction, desolation. Go ahead. And the famine. And the famine. Go ahead. And the sword. And the sword. By whom shall I comfort thee? Who's going to comfort us? Our people run into the white man. Another group of us run into Egyptians. Who's going to comfort us? Go ahead. Thy sons have fainted. Thy sons have fainted, meaning lost consciousness. Right? Meaning what? They're not awake. These brothers and sisters that say that they are conscious, they are unconscious. They are fainted. Read that part again. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. That's the proof. Who's hanging on the street corners in New York City? Awesome. Blacks let you hanging on the corners, getting into trouble after trouble. Why? Because we fainted from the truth. We are unconscious race of people. Go ahead. As a wild bull in a net. And we are like wild bulls in a net. How wild are we? We shoot ourselves randomly. They said Chicago's death toll rose up. Mm -hmm. Like I think of seven, almost 700 people in a year. Mm -hmm. 700. In Jamaica, it's 1,000. 1,100 in Jamaica. Okay. 
Our people, we love to kill ourselves. We rob each other. But don't let the white man do something to us. We're going to march, march, march. Black Lives Matter in the forefront. But when we kill ourselves at astronomical rate, no, don't say nothing. Snitches get stitches. Don't talk about that. Black Lives Matter. Yeah, right. Go ahead. They are full of the fury of the Lord. Who can tell me what the fury of the Lord is? What is the fury? I want, who can tell me what it is? The fury. They are full of the fury of the Lord. The same hand. Only one brother got a clue. Give me a note. No, give me somebody else on the right. Right. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. What is the fury of the Lord? Uh, Shalom, like we read in verse 17. Who are you? Soldier Othniel. Soldier Othniel, okay. Nice to meet you, brother. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, like we read in uh, verse 17, it's the uh, curses of Deuteronomy 28. Very good. That's the fury of the Lord that we are filled with. There's no escaping it. You could call yourself Kemet. You could call yourself Zulu. You ain't escaping the curses of Deuteronomy 28. Them things is on us like, what's that expression? White on rice. I don't know if there's a better expression, but that's like, all that popped in my like head. Like stink on doo-doo. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I like that one. <laughs> but you're right. It's all over us. We can't escape it. He always goes there. Go ahead. The rebuke of thy God. Y'all see that? <laughs> the rebuke of thy... What verse you at? That was verse 20. Go ahead. Therefore, hear now this. Thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Thus saith thy Lord. The so we are afflicted and drunken, but wine is not what we're drunk with. What are we drunk with? Lies and philosophy. Give me that in uh, Micah 2.11 to show you what the wine represents. God says we're drunken, but not with wine, meaning not literal wine. Micah 2 and verse 11. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying... Say I that the spirit of falsehood do lie. Give me Colossians 2 and 8. That's really what I wanted. Colossians 2 and 8. Colossians 2 and verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy. We've been spoiled through philosophy. And right? vain deceit. We've been spoiled through vain deceit. After the tradition of men. After the tradition of men. Go ahead. After the rudiments of the world. After the rudiments of the world. Go ahead. And not after Christ. We have not followed Christ at all. The true biblical Christ. We as a people have not followed him. Let's go back to Isaiah. Isaiah. Chapter 51 and verse 21. Therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. And when you, you know when you're drunk, you always stagger, right? You know, obviously drunk people, they stagger. So what are we staggering in? Different philosophies. We're staggering in different religions. We're staggering in different political groups. We're staggering. Go ahead. Thus saith thy Lord, the Lord, and thy God that pleadeth the cause of his people. The only one that pleads our cause, believe it or not, is the Lord of heaven and earth. He's the only one that cares. You looking for all these nations to give a hoot about, you, about us. They don't care. They ain't giving nothing back to us. So we have to depend on the Lord God Almighty. Go ahead. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling. So Deuteronomy 28, the Lord said, there's going to come a time when I take that cup of trembling out of your hands. Go ahead. Even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Even the dregs of the cup of fury that you were, we were forced to drink. God said, I'm going to take it from you. Go ahead. Thou shalt no more drink it again, uh -huh. but I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee. So all the curses of Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68, the prophecy says God's going to remove Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68 from us and give it to our enemies. Make them drink every drop of it. They go, their sons and daughters are going to be given to another people. They're going to be sold on slave blocks. Okay, Their nationality is going to be changed to the way it's supposed to be. That's what the Lord has said. Everybody understand that? Yes, Come on. Which have said to thy soul, bow down. This is what the nations say to us. They say to our soul, it's a spiritual saying, bow down, go ahead. That we may go over. That we may walk over you, go ahead. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. So God is saying in the spirit, we let people walk all over us. 
They tell us what Jesus is white. We let that go by too. We never challenge them in the scriptures. Christmas, we don't challenge nothing a white man says. We accept, yes, a master, yes, a boss, yes. He said, you have bowed your soul as the street that say bow down that we may go. Let us walk all over you. They poison our food, our water system, like in uh, uh, Detroit. Detroit, yeah. <laughs> Oh, he's going to get Detroit, Michigan. They said, oh, oh, he's going to give us free college. Free college? You got to live in Detroit for four years. Wait, stop. What good is it if I drop dead in four years? But yes, yeah, thank you, boss. Thank you, boss. That's us. That's Bishop, us. Bishop, you, yes. forget, you forget politics. <laughs> they walk all over us. They tell us every year, four years, they're going to do something for our community. They, they walk all over us. Oh, the latest thing. I don't know if y'all saw that thing with Ben Carson. You know, you got the video. Yashua put it up on GroupMe, the New York GroupMe. It's with Senator Warren cross-examining Ben Carson, who is nominated to be head over the urban development of housing. I'm going to show you how black people get down in politics. This is going to give us an example of how the nations walk all over us. I'm going to give you all a minute. But what we're going to see is that we get these political positions, these seats of alleged power. And the only power we are allowed to use is power that enforces Esau. It's never to enforce our own people like Mordecai and Queen Esther did. Because they use their power. Can you give me that, Isaac and Esther? <coughs> what Mordecai and Esther did with their authority, their power. Give me that. I want to show you something. You get a seat of authority and you got to use it to support and substantiate the white man and step on your own people. You've got to be kidding me. You better undo what you done did. That's the chapter 9 and verse 30. And he sent the letters unto all the Jews to the 120 and 7 provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus with words of peace. Start at 29. Start at 29. That's what I wanted. Verse 29. Then Esther the queen, the daughter of Abihel and Mordecai the Jew, Wrote with all authority. You see that word? Those two words? All authority. They wrote with all authority. What? To confirm this second letter of Purim. Go ahead. And he sent the letters unto all the Jews, to the 120 and seven provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus, with words of peace and truth, to confirm these days of Purim in their times appointed, according as Mordecai the Jew and Esther the queen had enjoined them, and as they had decreed for themselves and for their seed the matters of the fastings and their cry. And the decrees of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim, and it was written in the book. When y'all read this history, it's a Jump over to verse 27. Verse 27. The Jews ordained and took upon them and upon their seed. See that, and upon their seed, meaning their people. Go ahead. And upon all such as joined themselves unto them, so as it should not fail, that they would keep these two days according to their writing and according to their appointed time every year. So Esther, the queen, she used her authority. She didn't use her authority to abuse her people. She used to help her people. That's so if you ever work for black people, I don't know how many of you ever have a black boss. Usually nine times out of ten, they are worse than a white man. Absolutely. They abuse you, misuse you. That's what they do. Why? Because the master said, I got to treat y'all like this. Okay. Now, here's the video, right? When they ask him, is this it? Yes, yes. Let's watch this. I don't know how many of y'all watch the news, but watch. He's just been put over housing. Now, remember, Trump's whole thing is buildings. Housing. Watch. This is an area where uh, Ben Carson, as the head of HUD, could apparently do way more harm than I had thought that he could. So he's going to be in charge of tens of billions of dollars of funding that will go towards government housing. In a lot of cases, that will be the construction of housing. And I had briefly forgotten that we have a president who's in the business of housing. And so thankfully, Elizabeth Warren did not forget about that. And so she's going to find out about the potential conflicts of interest from having a guy with no experience other than that he's apparently buddies with Trump now in charge of all of that funding which you'll see in this video. Now, housing development is an area in which President-elect Trump and his family have significant business interests. Can you assure me that not a single taxpayer dollar that you give out will financially benefit the president-elect or his family? 
Well, uh, Senator, uh, I was worried that you wouldn't get back. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I will absolutely not play favorites for anyone. Dr. Carson, I, let me stop right there. I, I'm actually trying to ask a more pointed question, and it's not about your good faith. That's not my concern. My concern is whether or not among the billions of dollars that you will be responsible for handing out in grants and loans, can you just assure us that not one dollar will go to benefit either the president-elect or his family? It will not be my intention to do anything I, to, to benefit any, any American. I understand that. It's for all Americans, but everything may, that we do. Do I take that to mean that you may manage programs that will significantly benefit the president-elect? You can take it to mean that I will manage things in a way that benefits the American people. That is going to be the goal. Uh, to, to the best uh, you understand uh, that. It, it, if there happens to be an extraordinarily uh, good program that's working for millions of people and it turns out that, that, that someone that you're targeting is going to gain you know, $10 from it, am I going to say, no, the rest of you Americans can't have it? I think logic and common sense probably would be the best way. The problem is that you can't assure us that HUD money, not of $10 varieties, but of multi-million dollar varieties, will not end up in the president-elect's pockets. And the reason you can't assure us of that is because the president-elect is hiding his family's business interests from you, from me, from the rest of America. And this just highlights the absurdity and the danger of the president-elect's refusal to put his assets in a true blind trust. So, look, maybe I'm looking at this in the worst possible light, I don't know. But that performance that we just saw there, and his inability to simply agree with what should be clear, I believe that the only reason he has been nominated is to assist Donald Trump in the looting of America. <laughs> like, the $10 thing, you, you're, they're going to give money to the Trump organization. Mm -hmm. So No one's going to stop them. So Ben Carson doesn't have much of a moral compass. Now, that seems like a harsh thing to say, but I've gone over this uh, in the primaries when he was running. Uh, he's the guy who does all these fantastical, ridiculous stories about how he was a violent black man uh, and he would stab his friends and hit his mom with a hammer, but he was saved by the Lord Jesus Christ and, uh, and became uh, you know, enlightened and educated. It's a story tailor-made for white racists. Oh yeah, well, you know, the blacks are savages, but they can be saved by Jesus. We knew it, and they buy his books and they pay him a lot of money for speeches. Now he knows what he's doing. Uh, now you might not know why he does those super weird stories. Why would someone brag about hitting their mom with a hammer, which he, by the way, didn't even do, right? Or stabbing their friend with a, uh, a knife that happens to hit their belt buckle. He didn't even do, right? And there's no witnesses of any of that. And how he would save white people from other black savages when they were rioting. A story that also is backed up by no witnesses. Yeah. He does all of that and he knows what he's doing to appeal to white racists so they'll pay him. The man has no moral compass whatsoever. So if you were to, if you business is in property and the one department that deals with property is housing and urban development and you wanted someone with no moral compass who yeah. uh, will do whatever you want, the guy you pick might be Ben Carson. And so it is interesting and telling that he won't say something as simple as, no, of course I'm not going to have a conflict of interest and uh, and let the president profit from decisions I make in his own administration. That's an easy, easy answer, he right? He refused to do it, and he wouldn't even do it. He wouldn't even do it. So uh, that's man, ominous, man. And so the, all this whole thing that he was taught that, oh, do a joke in the beginning that was like the most awkward laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else is laughing. Glad Nobody's you came laughing. back, Elizabeth Warren, to kick my assets all over the place. <laughs> right? So that's not going to cover up for the substance of what you're saying, which is, yeah, maybe Trump makes a lot of money off of this. Oops, did that happen? Well, it was because it was the to the benefit of the American people. You don't want to sign.
So read that verse again, Isaiah. This is what Isaiah was talking about, about bow down. If you notice, the, the, the blacks that's around Trump, they're somewhat feminine and they're weak, like Ben Carson. Trump blasted him on, what's that thing called when they all of the, uh, the people is running for? Not tabletop. Some, not you, somebody else. <laughs> the primary debate. Trump blasted Ben Carson, tore him up, called him weak. Orc. Now he put him over billions of dollars with the urban uh, uh, housing. He knew Trump knew what he was doing. You got this dude. Yeah, hold, look how he holds the mic. Yes, yeah. I'm like, oh God. No reflection of what we just read. And you know what? There's a chief of police uh, that's running this chief uh, in, I believe, it's Washington D.C. Michigan, where Trump said, Trump told the guy at 12.01, resign. He's one of the cops. I don't know if it was, I think it was D.C., I can't remember. But it's a black, it's a Jake. D.C., thank you. He, he said at 12.01, you will resign. Say it again. The chief of the National Guard, right. Wants him to resign. He said, 12.01, you're going to, Trump don't want any black male that will stand up to him and say, hey, what the hell are you doing? He don't want that. He wants the black guy that's going to go, yes, yes. That's, look at the black guys that support him. Even on CNN, look at the black males that support him. I'm like, oh, God, what the hell is this? Can you read that again for me? Isaiah 51 and 23. But I will put it into the hand of them that have... Now I want to bow down. Is that it? Yes, that's the verse. Okay. Which have said to thy soul, bow down that we may go over. Bow down that we can walk over you. Do whatever we want to you. Go ahead. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground. That's our people. And we have laid our body as the ground. And as the street. And as the street. To them that went over. To the white man that walked all over us. Was that it? Yes, sir. Now that is saying the same thing. Watch this. Go to Ezekiel 37, 1 through 8. This Isaiah 51 is saying the same thing as Ezekiel 37. You went over this today, right? Not today. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 1. Uh -huh. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? So this valley represents America. I'm going to say it again. This valley represents first and foremost America, the United States of America. And there's a reason why I say it's America. America. Yeah, it's Trump's America now. Uh, it ain't talking about Haiti, Puerto Rico, El Salvador. It ain't talking about them places first and foremost. It's talking about America first. Let me ask you a question. Here's a question. Here's a question. How do we know this is talking about America first? For you, you brothers, y'all have been reading. I'm, I, I need y'all to pick up quick. Come on. Okay, nobody's hand is up. How do we know? Oh, in the back, in the back, in the back. Let's see. Shalom, leadership. Uh, Shalom. You can use. What's your name? Oh, uh, my name is Aaron. Okay, yeah. you know I'm slow of mind, so yes, just help uh, me. Out. Uh, I would probably start out with Revelation 11, the in the great city Sodom and uh, Egypt. Mm, very good, very good, very good. I like that answer. That boy, good right there. Read that for me, Captain Isaac. Revelation 11. We're gonna come right back here. I had another one, but that's good. That's good. <laughs> Revelation 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The great city is the greatest kingdom on earth. America. Babylon the Great. Go ahead. Which spiritually is called Sodom. And America is spiritually called Sodom because they pass laws for homosexuals, transsexuals, any kind of sexual. Oh, oh, and pet oh, there's a new thing. Mm -hmm. You know what that is, Abiel, the pedophile law that they passing, they're trying to pass. It's on, it's on, I think it was group me. It was. When they passing, it's not called pedophilia no more. Right. It's called, um, a, man, not man love, it's, uh, yeah, it's called, um, anybody remember? No, 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 not it's that. A new it's, new, it's new, it's new, new it's a new thing. Tag on. Who posted it? 
Yeah, something like that with older, younger love. Right. Something, I can't remember. If you find it, let us know. Read that again. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Right. This place is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Why? Because it follows all the practices of ancient Egypt. You got the, uh, the Egyptian obelisk in the Washington Monument. You got the Egyptian obelisk in Central Park. Those are real obelisks, okay? You have the all sing Eye of Ra on the back of the dollar bill, okay? Um, yeah, that pretty much is it. Go ahead. And they of the people... And, and, we're, saying, and we're also our Lord. Where also our Lord was crucified. Right. We know Christ was crucified in Jerusalem. But guess what? His image and his teaching was put to death here. They killed his image, killed his teachings. Go ahead. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues... This is the proof that it's America. And they of what? Of the people and kindreds and tongues. Meaning all nationalities, all nations, all races. And nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. So they're watching our dead bodies. They watched us, observed us for 350 years. That's three days and a half. Go ahead. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Right. Because we're not spiritually uh, dead. You got it, Abiel? He's still looking. The, the, um, the group me. Okay, we got. I got to show you that this thing. Some of you women, you you don't know what's about to happen. You gonna find out though. New York group. You gonna find out. Y'all keep thinking it's God bless America. He gonna damn this place. Here it is. Legalizing sexual child abuse. Pedophilia now classified as a sexual orientation. Let's go down. Let's read something. I don't think they realize what that means. Like when you fill out certain applications and they say, what is your sexual orientation? You can actually put this down. Right. That's what that's saying. See, they didn't get that. This is so beyond sick, I have no words. It would seem to be the first step in tolerating the sodomizing of our children. It's not pedophilia anymore. It's being a minor attracted person. That's what it's called now. A minor attracted person. Meaning you like a child. So well, you can send your babies to school and a damn perverted teacher with his hands in his pants. I, don't, I shouldn't say that. That'll go on with this. They're exactly. saying it's okay. People can classify themselves as heterosexual, homosexual, asexual, metrosexual. There are endless sexual orientations under the sun, and now pedophilia can be added to the list. In the fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, DSM, you know there's a, one of those comedic guys always talk about this book. He always holds it up as silver or blue, changes. He's a, a psychologist. In the fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, DSMV, the American Psychological Association, APA, drew a very distinct line between pedophilia and pedophilic disorder. Pedophilia refers to a sexual orientation or profession of sexual preference devoid of consummation. Whereas pedophilic disorder is <laughs> defined as a compulsive and is used in reference to individuals who act on their sex. They're both the devil and me. Both of them is filthy and wicked and evil. Okay? APA's decision has given rise to numerous pedophilia advocacy groups. You see that? Numerous pedophilia advocacy groups. Did they advocate this? You have white folks advocating, the, and I, you better believe there may be some Negroes up in them things. You women finding dudes on, the, on Facebook, you keep it up. You watch what you get. He gonna say, you, you, got, you got kids? Yeah, I got kids. Can I see the picture? And as the truth is, I believe it's on our website, I put an article up about a woman that got suckered on Facebook. And a dude, as good, as, as lovely as she was, he did not want her. He wanted her child. And he got her child. It should be on our website. Um, what was I reading? APA's decision has given rise to numerous pedophilia advocacy, advocacy groups. The chief of them being Be For You Act. Be For You Act. That's Booty For You Act. 
I'm sorry. It ain't funny, but it's nasty. Y'all don't see y'all don't see that this white man is sick as hell. This is a sick. The, the most I got to bring the bombs, man. He just got to bring that thing. We got to get out of here. We got to go, man. This is we got to get. Lord, send the missiles, please. Yes. We can get the hell out of here. So this B for You Act is a nonprofit grassroots organization based in Maryland, created in 2003 primarily as a means for minor attracted persons. In quotations. That's a new term, minor attracted person. You see how they change words to make it sound like it's harmless and they wicked as hell. You got some Israelites that be for this thing here. We gonna get them when they're 12 years old. We gonna get them when they're young. Damn. Minor attracted persons, sick people. <laughs> to be open about their sexual preferences in a supportive atmosphere be for you, booty for you act is now widening. Why did put those words together? Now widening the scope of the organization. <laughs> According <is> disgusting. to <laughs> hey, when they were writing this, they thought the same thing. That's why they chose those words. These are some sick, perverted people. Sick. Some sick people. Sick. According to spokesperson and registered registered sex offender. Paul Cristiano, the pedophilia advocacy group, is working towards destigmatizing the mental health community. They have a sex offender advocating yes. this. Yes, right. They mean making it normal. Sex offender is working towards destigmatizing the mental health community. It's making you forget that it's right, wrong exactly. to be a damn pedophile. That's what they're trying to do. A pedophile, pedophile they're trying to make telling you it's not that bad. Y'all see this? Craziness. They're going to make it normal. That's what they're talking about, making it normal. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to say something. Some, some brothers online and in here might get angry, but I'm going to say this. I have to. Uh, mm, do I want to say that? Some brothers are registered sex offenders. And I don't mean that they were dealing with little kids. Let me put my glasses on while I say this. Some of y'all know what I'm saying. I'm trying to say it nicely. But you have been labeled and, labeled and charged as a registered sex offender because in the projects you have that hoe who is 13 or 14 who looks like she's 20 right. and told you, or maybe she didn't tell you, I'm just giving you the benefit of the doubt, told you she's 21 and you laid down with her. Now her parents, now everybody in the project may have slept with her. You just happened to get caught. You know who you are, online listening. And there's a lot of brothers, unfortunately, because when I tell you I go down, special victim, and I was talking to one of the sisters there, and she said, she was telling me a lot of black males are red, and Latinos, oh, that's right, that's right. Y'all like to exclude yourself, but I'm talking about y'all too. Registered sex offenders calls it a project hoe. The hussy mama who walks around spreading her behind all through the projects. And she is labeled the hoe because everybody slept with her. Right. It just so happened when you got to her, the parents said, you know what, I'm pressing charges now. And, then you got and now you got registered as a sex offender. girl went around telling her she's 20 or whatever. But one of the arguments with this is that if they undo this, you see how he's a registered sex offender. If they allow that law to pass, that means everybody. Now, it will be, I'll say this. It will be good for the brothers. But, but I got, I, it's, the backlash is that it's going to affect even the real pedophiles. I don't know if I'm saying it right. I may be saying some wrong stuff. I'll understand what he's saying. I don't know. Then we're going, I don't know what you're saying. Are you saying because, this? Because the brothers that saw the woman, that saw the girl, she was young, 13, and consensual and all that, he thought that she was really 20, 21. So because that wasn't the case, he got the, lab, he got the label put on him. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't trying to deal with somebody 13 years old. That's the point. Right. But he got caught up in it because of the technicalities of her age. So this would, re this would remove him from it. But at the same time, while it removed him from it, the stigmatizing 
the real demon that's looking right. for the real 13 year old, he gets to do it. Exactly. Without with impunity. Exactly. Right. And on, on top of yeah, right. If you if you 18 and and you deal if a brother 18 and he deal with a with a female that's 17, don't matter if you one year older than her. You know, if the parents find out about that, you could go to jail for statutory rape and you could be labeled as a as a um sex offender. Sex offender. It's not 17, 16. 17 is legal. In some states, it's very yeah, in some, the states. Some states right. In some states it's 17, some states it's 16. It varies in whatever state you go, you know? Right, but also, this also blows out that, out the water, that statement you hear that homosexuals use, love is love. Right. Now, this destroys them all together at that point. This is legalized. Go back, go up real quick, real, real quick. To that thing, brother, brother. It says the, the, the DSM, Esau, he changes, he revises that every other year. Homosexuality was on that list right. as mental disorder. That's why um, there was a time where they had what they call it don't ask, don't tell law in the military. Yeah. Because if you were homosexual, they said you didn't fit for war because there's something wrong with you. So Esau had that removed in the following rev revising of revision of that. Go back. Go back to it. Of, that, of, of the um, DSM. That's why it says um, version 5. Was that 5? Because I think around the first one or two, it had homosexual list, homosexuality listed as a mental disorder. But now they removed it because they want to pass that law. They had that intent to pass that law to make it legal. So they removed that. But it's a mental disorder. And they did that under the black president. Right. Mm. Yep. Mm. Uh, okay, that's, I don't want to read no more. This is the filth. Um, where was we reading? Ezekiel 31, we were at. Almost done. We're almost done. Let me see what time it is. Yeah, Ezekiel 37. I'm sorry. We're almost finished. So what I was showing you is Isaiah 51, 20 down, about them walking over us, laid our bodies to the ground. It's saying the same thing as Ezekiel 37, 1 through 8 is saying. Read that. Ezekiel 37, verse 4. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. You know, they got a, a song, bone, hip bone connected to the leg bone. It's all based on this. Go ahead. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. What this is going into is Israel, the steps it takes for Israel to wake up. So when it talks about the bones coming together, that goes into some type of solidarity. Then it talks about the uh, sinews coming together and the flesh, meaning we identify with flesh that was similar to our flesh. That was that black pride, black unity of the 60s. That's what all this is going into. Even that Israelites caught up in it. But notice it says, but there was no breath in them. What does the breath represent, brothers? The laws. There is no law. That's, you even got Israelites today that still fit that. They acknowledge their Israel, but there's no law. There's no breath in them. They will slander you, hate you, spread all manner of rumors, and they don't give a dag going about God's laws. So this is saying the same thing as we just read in Isaiah, the 51st chapter. Now when we go back to Isaiah 52 now, could we finish 51? Read Isaiah 52, one, verse 1 and 2, I think it is. Isaiah 52 and verse 1. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garment. So that God is telling us to wake up. Why? Because in the chapter before it, remember what happened? It said we laid our body as the ground. Now in chapter 52, cause remember, there was no chapters. These were one long thing of letters. The chapters came later. Okay? So we're in the ground. We're on the ground. People are walking over us spiritually. Now the prophet says what? Read again, 52. Awake, awake. Wake up. Go ahead. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on your strength, O Zion, O Israelites. Go ahead. Put on thy beautiful garment. Put on your beautiful garment. Meaning what? That covers a whole plethora of things. God gave us a dress code. The dress code represents God's laws. So you got some of us ashamed of that. I don't want to put on my beautiful garments. Who's supposed, who says we're supposed to walk around in sackcloth? And you know what? Even the nice stuff that, we, that looks nice, it's still considered sackcloth. You want to know why? Because remember, when, 
We at one time were real gold studs, real silver studs and diamonds and stuff in our clothes and rubies and put real gold dust in our hair like the Bible says we did. We ain't doing that now. We ain't got that type of resources. So this is still technically sackcloth, but we're trying. We're trying. The Lord sees they, my people are trying. Look at it. Look at the women. They're looking lovely. That brother's just handsome. Okay. They're trying something. Read that again. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Now let's go. Was that it? That's verse one, yeah. Let's go. Back. That was verse one? Yes, sir. Verse two. Shake thyself from the dust. Stop. Why does it say shake yourself from the dust? Why? Uh, brother in the back. Pick anyone in the back. I don't care. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Who are you? Uh, my name is Job now. <laughs> Did he say Job now? Yeah, Job. Job. Oh, that's your, that's your new Hebrew name? Yeah. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, bro. I thought you meant you did another train. I'm sorry. I say I say the dust is because um, we was in African customs. Mm. Yes or no? I'll tell you what I mean by that. Go to the next one. Shalom, Bishop. Shalom. Who are you? Brother Shemariah. Shemariah. Nobody got that name. Okay, go ahead. I, um... It says, shake thyself from the dust. Um, it's kind of like when you outside and you come back into the house, you got dust covered in you. Likewise, in this context, um, it's talking about worldly dust. Okay, we get in the brother in front of you. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. I'm Brother Masha. Masha? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it says that it says shake yourself from the dust because in the chapter before that, it says we had laid ourselves. Uh, to the ground. Do you hear that? Y'all heard that? Y'all missed that. We, in the chapter before, it said we laid ourselves in the ground so that people could walk over us. So yes, the dust, like the brother brought up, he brought up African, that's a part of it. But guess what? Any political, religious thing we're in, people walk all over us. So now in the next chapter, read that again, Isaac. Shake thyself from the dust. So God is saying, wake up, get off the ground, stand up like a man. Shake yourself from the dust. Stop having these nations walk all over you. That's what he's telling us, good. Arise and sit down. Arise, meaning wake up and what? And sit down. S sit down means study. Learn. Go ahead. O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. That's o captivity. captive daughter of Zion. Now go back to Ezekiel 37. Now let's see what this is talking about. Now from Ezekiel 37, we're going to read 9 to 11, saying the same thing. Ezekiel 37 in verse 9. So chapter 52 in Isaiah said, wake up, shake yourself from the dust. Let's see what this says. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So now, the member of breath is what, brothers? The laws. Bring out my laws to the people. Go ahead. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet in exceeding great army. You know, there's so much in that one verse right there, verse 10. It says, and the breath came into them, and they lived, meaning they started to apply, operative word, apply the law, and stood upon their feet. All in that, them two lines, years. It's years. From the time that we realized we Israelites, all the way till now, years have trans have gone by. And it says, and stood up what? Stood up upon their feet in exceeding great army. That's what we just read. Aaron led us to read in Revelation 11. That same thing being said is the same thing in Isaiah 52. Awake, awake, shake thyself from the dust. It's saying the same thing. Us waking up from what? From fainting, from being unconscious. Go ahead. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. So this represents all Israel. Go ahead to 12 tribes. Go ahead. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. Like it says in Ephesians 2. Go ahead. 
We are cut off for our parts. Remember it said we were one time cut off from the promises and all that? That's what it's going into. But the prophecy is that Israel's waking up. Israel's coming back to becoming conscious, if you want to use that phrase, or awoken, as it says. Read Romans 13, 11, then we'll close out. Romans 13. The book of Romans, chapter 13 and verse 11. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. So the Bible keeps telling us, wake up, wake up, letting us know that we are spiritually asleep. We are dead people. He says, wake up from that sleep. Go ahead. For now is our salvation nearer than we, nearer than when we believe. You know what's heavy about that? I was thinking about that. Watch this. The birth of Christ. Remember we read in Revelation 12, we always read it, 12 and 9, it says the devil, it ain't 12 and 9, but it says the devil knows he has a short time left. 12 and 12. 12 and 12. Okay. And when you sit back and think, how does he know he has a short time left? I'm going to hit you out with something. People say Christ never existed. Well, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. With all the archaeology alone, and not only that, they changed time based around the life of Christ. His life and death changed time. They said, call the prior to his birth, B.C. Now, when he was born, call it A.D., year of our Lord. That proves this man, he had to, ex he was bad. He had to be a bad somebody. You changed hey, time around his life. You know how sick Negroes are to say Christ didn't exist and you ask them what year it is and they tell you the name of the year. They tell you the <laughs> number of the year and they still tell me he didn't exist. That's when you have a fool. That's when you, you got to just walk away from him. Exactly. Ask the comedic community, and what, if Christ didn't exist, the year AD, that's all false, then what is the year? What year are we in? <laughs> I don't know. You hear crickets. Let me tell you what they did. When they changed the year around Christ's life, they moved it back. Who knows how they moved it back? How many years to what? You remember? Four years. Four BC. They moved it. You check it out. Google it if you want. They moved it to four BC. Why? That gives them a four year window to figure out things that's going on in the earth. I know I hit you. I, 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 I don't know what are you talking about. Four years. They gave themselves a four-year window. So we could read that Revelation 12, 12. Watch this. I think I'm playing. I ain't playing with y'all. <laughs> Revelation chapter 12 and verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. How does he know he has a short time? He has to know the scriptures. He has to know time and chains of events. The time was altered already. So move that back four years. That gives us four years to play around with. We can fix things up. And Esau is going to fail, though. Their pride has deceived them. They are going to lose. We'll go back to Romans 13. But we'll go into in depth in that on another class. <laughs> Romans 13 and verse 11. Yeah. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. With that four years, imagine they moved it four. So this is technically, according to them, 2017. But remember, they moved four years back, which means this is really not 2017. This is, give me four years on top of seven. 21. 2021. Mm -hmm. Esau is the devil. He know what he's doing. Yeah, happy new year, niggas. 2017, power to the people. He goes, yeah, this is 2021. What the hell's going on here? Esau's the, that's why, it, uh, anyway. Go ahead, read on. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Go ahead. The night is far spent. The night is far spent. Come on. The day is at hand. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. We got to cast off the works of darkness. That's that comedic dude. Cast him off. That's that whole person you used to be. That political party you used to be in. Cast all the sins of the world. Cast them all off. Go ahead. And let us put on the armor of light. Put on Christ. He is the armor of light. Learn the entire Bible. Go ahead. Let us walk honestly as in the day, mm -hmm. not in rioting and drunkenness. Not in rioting and drunken like y'all did when y'all used to go to the clubs. Go ahead. Not in chambering. Not in chambering. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. And wantonness. Lustfulness. Not in strife. Not in debate strife. 
and envying. And envying one another. Go ahead. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the proof that the armor of light is Jesus Christ. Go ahead. And make not. Oh, let me say to that Shahawa Shai. Can I say it like that now? Can I get a con con out of one con? Con 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 out of one con con con. Read that verse again. <laughs> but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. All right, so with that, I'm going to close out and we give all praises to the Most High. We pray that you brothers and sisters can glean off of today's class. There'll be many, many more. Just stay tuned. Stay with us. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.